Hi, my name is Michael Henderson. I am a biochemistry molecular biology undergrad at Carroll College. Um, and for this presentation, uh, I'll be focusing on liposomes versus lipid nanoparticle uh, formulation and how they may potentially, potentially be useful for antibiotic entrapment and drug delivery. Um, but first, our project really focused on uh, entrapping a fluorescein dye to ensure um, fabrication of these vesicles, uh, liposomes, and lipid nanoparticles were possible. So a wide variety of techniques for drug delivery are being developed. And at the forefront of uh, drug delivery are these small scale drug carriers to pharmaceutically deliver active drug compounds to specific target sites within the cell. Um, liposomes frequently um, have poor water solubility, whereas uh, lipid nanoparticles have the ability to provide a pristine environment encapsulating these pharmaceutically based uh, compounds that may be uh, degraded or uh, limited in effectiveness due to uh, water solubility. And so in this project, uh, it was really being able to fabricate and look at both liposomes and lipid nanoparticles and compare uh, their effectiveness in encapsulating specifically a fluorescein dye to test their efficacy. So in this project, you might ask yourself, what are liposomes? What are lipid nanoparticles? How do they differ? So for liposomes, they often, uh, and lipid nanoparticles, they're often, uh, they often share similar components in that they have ionizable lipids and uh, phospholipids that really anneal together um, due to the hydrophobic effect, creating this environment that entraps particles. Um, the difference is that lipid nanoparticles often uh, contain more components such as, uh, such as a steric stabilizer um, and additional lipids that would allow for the environment not to uh, contain any uh, water or buffer solution present and only contain the desired drug compound or carrier, in our case, just testing the fluorescein dye. So how we made that, or how we made and fabricated both of them is a similar technique in that we obtained a flask or a round bottom flask or beaker, and we were able to dehydrate the lipids and then add buffer and also add our dyes and um, then evaporate off uh, to then add additionally buffer once more to uh, our solution and then effectively sonicate them. And all of this is outlined here in the material and methods as I had walked through. And in the ultrasonication step, ultimately what we would like to see um, are for the liposomes, are these uh, components here, where they do have the fluorescein dye contained within them, although they additionally have um, whatever our buffer was in them. Whereas the lipid nanoparticles seen here, are much more complex in their components, not containing um, any, if at all, uh, the buffer solution as they're um, sterically stabilized by, in this case, um, tributyrin, uh, which is the core of our lipid nanoparticle in this experiment. So uh, what we were able to do after uh, fabricating and formulating these lipid nanoparticles and liposomes is we had to separate them from the excess materials. So in doing this, we would have a beaker filled with our buffer solution and we would have dialysis tubing. And effectively what dialysis tubing would do is we would pipette our uh, lipid nanoparticles um, or our liposomes within the tubing and it separates 
um, based off molecular size. Um, after placing the tubing into the beaker, it'll separate, separate based off molecular size, the excess, um, whether that be fluorescein dye that did not get encapsulated within or the uh, excess uh, lipids that did not formulate and make the liposomes. So what is expected is we would have only liposomes or only lipid nanoparticles in our dialysis tubing. So moving forward, after separating and isolating strictly our liposomes and lipid nanoparticles, we were able to analyze, and this is seen in figures two, three, four, and five, some of our experimentation um, using UV visible spectroscopy and a fluorometer. Um, more specifically, a red tide USB 650 ocean optic fluorometer provided by Dr. John Rowley. And in this experiment, um, seen in figure seven first for the U, uh, ultraviolet UV visible spectroscopy, uh, was we observed absorption patterns for the dye. And we'd expect the dye uh, to be seen based off of the color uh, at 490 nanometers. The reason we selected this dye is because once we have shined the UV light upon it, as seen in figure four, we'd observe fluorescence to be seen. Um, so for the UV vis, in such a case, we wanted to determine um, if there had been any difference in the uh, wavelength uh, upon, and if we had successfully encapsulated any of the fluorescein dye um, when comparing the lipid nanoparticles and the liposomes. And what had been seen was, and the black line representing the control of just the uh, vial containing um, the fluorescein dye, having a, a beam of light shine through it, uh, we have seen not as significant data um, leading us to believe that it may have not, it being the fluorescein dye, may not have uh, been encapsulated within. So ongoing, we decided to take our measures elsewhere and look at the intensity of fluorescence. And so that was achieved by using a fluorometer where we, what we would do is we would shine a light at it and we would quench the reaction. And effectively we would see a decrease in fluorescence um, from the baseline. And the baseline being um, how much dye was within the lipid nanoparticles or liposomes. And you might be thinking, well, if you quench the reaction or if you provide uh, potassium iodide, which was our quencher in this experiment, it would be protected by lipid nanoparticles or the liposomes, and you'd be correct. So what we would do, our theory was, if we had heated the solution, it would um, irritate, if not uh, degrade, and result in the breakdown of the liposomes and lipid nanoparticles releasing the fluorescein dye. So our thought was the more dye contained within would mean the more successful uh, we were in encapsulating uh, when comparing lipid nanoparticles to the liposomes. So if we saw a greater drop in, a, in from the baseline when comparing across the liposomes and lipid nanoparticles, we would expect, uh, or we would see that uh, the one that had a greater drop had more fluorescein dye within. And what we had actually detected here in figure six uh, was the dye might be heat sensitive, which ultimately would need us to turn to other dyes that weren't sensitive. But before we did that, we wanted to look at the comparison between undialyzed, as I had previously mentioned in the materials and methods, and dialyzed to see if it truly was heat sensitive. And what had been observed here from the baseline fluorescein being dark green uh, of 30 degrees Celsius and 60 degrees Celsius being the light blue and the LNPs and liposomes respectively was there wasn't as much significance as expected 
uh, in determining the encapsulation efficiency due to the heat influencing and degrading the dye's fluorescence. So um, ultimately, we determined that the fluorescing dye was heat sensitive or temperature sensitive. So with these values calibrated, um, it was difficult to determine whether the liposomes versus the banana particles had been uh, more, which one had been more efficient. Although there were trends that the lipid nanoparticle had uh, a larger number of fluorescein dye molecules as our baseline often read higher than the liposomes. But further future aims would need to be performed, which include confirming the efficacy with different selected dyes, alternating the modes of lysis, meaning in this case we used a specific heat, but our range was very small. So maybe using greater heat or a different method that includes pH lysis or even photolysis. Um, and then after that, we can fine tune our liposomes or lipid nanoparticle fabrications. Ultimately, it would be great to be able to have a efficient protocol to encapsulate um, the fluorescein dye. And then we would be able to encapsulate uh, active drug compounds such as antibiotics that might be able to be delivered for uh, across biofilm uh, formations on a metal plate. Um, biofilms are a protective layer for bacteria. And if we we're able to bypass uh, that and deliver the cargo load um, with lipid nanoparticles uh, and liposome and or liposomes, we would be able to heat the compound and effectively see the levels of the drug delivery um, measuring the intensity of fluorescence. So after the heat lyses and releases the fluorescence and the drug carriers. So in this project, I would really like to acknowledge and um, give a shout out to Sarah Butler and Andrew Zijak for being amazing peers and collaborators on this project. And I would also like to acknowledge and um, thank uh, Dr. John Rowley for his continued guidance and support throughout this research project. Uh, I would be happy to uh, be a connection uh, in talking furthermore about how liposomes or lipid nanoparticles may be the wave of the future in delivering uh, drug carriers. Um, but I would like to also say thank you for attending my presentation today and uh, if you have any other questions, I am an email away and I'd be happy to answer any of them.